very unfortunate that um, Labour Party that we saw as alternative platform to producing um, better governance is emerged in this kind of uh, leadership crisis. But it's not something new. Almost all the political parties in Nigeria are involved in one internal crisis or the other, including the, the, the all progressive Congress. I uh, recall the, the old drama about Nganduje and his uh, corruption allegations in Kano uh, and the people of North Central saying it's their turn and all of that. But even PDP, even NMPP, even uh, APGA, almost all the political parties, I dare say, are meshed in one party, uh, leadership crisis or the other. And it's, it leaves a sore taste in the mouth, which is why many Nigerians are disenchanted with our political system, and they just don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, Labour Party, again, uh, even before Abure Imad as the national chairman, even under A.A. Sana, uh, the former national chairman that died in office, uh, A.A. Salam too, was emerged in leadership crisis all through the period he was the national leader. And you find out that uh, it, maybe it's, it has to do with human, uh, human thoughts or, you know, uh, inability to just coordinate things. Because I just don't understand. It doesn't sync with me. Um, this is Labour Party that was nearly moribund before Peter became on the platform of that party in May of last year, May 2023, when he defected from PDP. And it was the Peter Obi that actually more or less revived uh, that moribund party. And this whole altercation about your tenor has ended or not, you find out that there are too many, there are several angles to this whole story. First, the Nigeria Labour Congress said, they are the owners of the party because they formed the party. And that the tenor of Abure ascended and they have stopped to recognize Abure as the national leader of the party. Now, Abure insisted that NLC may have given birth to Labour Party, but nevertheless, Labour Party is an independent arm and um, uh, it's on its own. But the irony of this whole thing is that you ask yourself, if this is all about service, why are people digging deep? Why are they digging deep? Why are they insisting that they will not leave the stage? Why is all this crisis? There are issues around accountability for the fundings that were realized during the 2023 uh, elections. And you know that Labour Party charge in millions, um, you know, um, governorship candidate of the party paid 20 million. And I don't know how much they charge the presidential candidate for nomination and expression of interest fee. But not that all the parties use expression of interest and nomination form as a means of raising funds to run the party. Because when election is not uh, in sight, you still have to pay rent if you are not the owner of the buildings where you are having your party secretariat. And you are not just going to have only one party national secretariat, you are going to have secretariats across all the states uh, or majority of the states. Uh, some have in local governments and all of that. So it's, it borders on issue around accountability and transparent management of resources. Because I've seen all the altercations from even Abure to the obedient movement, how the money raised by Pito B in the lead up to the last presidential election, how it was managed. And that tied in uh, Aisha Yusufu and Pastor Ito Agodalo, who allegedly managed that fund. But yes, um, Pito B has an independent structure that he used to coordinate the affairs of his campaign outside of the Labour Party structure. And that is very familiar. That's the norm with all the parties. When you run 
on the party platform. You don't expect the secretariat of the party to also help you to manage your campaign. Right. So many of the aspirants and candidates, uh, uh, you know, go ahead to establish their own independent uh, campaign offices. And now there are altercations about the billions that were realized and how this money was real, was managed and whether there was proper account for that funds. But it goes beyond funding. It's about whether the antenna of Aburi has actually ended, yeah. right, whether it has not ended. Yes, I'm yeah, Mr. Ojo, I, just to, you know, to button, I, I, I want us to get some clarity on the convention that was held in March that re-elected Julius Aburi. Um, INEC, of course, you know, has said that that convention, um, you know, is null and void. You know, it, it you know, contravenes the con uh, uh, Constitution um, and the Electoral Act. So tell us a, about that. What exactly was wrong with the, with the convention, you know, that, you know, makes, of course, Julius Aburi's re-election as chairman null and void? So th this is it, uh, my brother. The convention does, does not just hold in isolation. You are supposed to start, you know, there are what is called party congresses. Congresses are supposed to start from what? To local government, to state, and then to the convention. So you are supposed to have congresses at the lower level before you get to the convention at the national. Now, how did the delegates that went to vote Abure in, in uh, is it Oka or wherever they had that uh, match convention? How did they match? How did the delegates, because it's not a direct convention in which all the Labour Party members descended on the venue to cast their ballots. There are supposed to be processes and procedure. And usually, you find that, that um, in the lead up to any convention, there will have been um, World Congress, Local Government Congress, State Congress, and then the, the, the party may say, those who emerge as the as the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, local government uh, executive will form the delegates, or those who emerge at the at the low, uh, the world or local government or state congress will form the delegates that will now vote at the convention. Now, all of these processes were circumvented by Aburi, and only a handful of people were picked is loyalists. And as at that time, the Nigerian Labour Congress have already written to INEC to say this man is acting ultra virus. His tenure has already ended and he does not possess the power that is trying. Because there is supposed to be there is supposed to be a convention planning committee. And if you look at that so-called convention, Abure was the sole candidate. How did that happen? How come there were no sales of nomination forms? How come there were no other contestants? How did the, those who vote <clears throat> at that convention, how did they emerge? Was there an independent party primary? Was there a nomination? Or was it just an affirmation? And you know, even when you look at the provisions of Electoral Act, although this has to do with the emergence of candidates for general elections. It has three different uh, modes of election. It says you either have consensus, um, direct or indirect primaries. But in this case, because it's an internal party election, there should have been a, a provision in the electoral guidance of Labour Party, as well as the provision in the constitution of Labour Party that will have highlighted how a convention is supposed to be planned, how it's supposed to be executed. Who has the power to even uh, plan and execute that? And to the extent that INEC, has, INEC is the one that gives legitimacy to political parties. And INEC in Section 225A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, also has the power to deregister any party. That power to give birth and to the register political party is vested in INEC. Yeah. And do you now, see that? INEC do you see that maybe happening? You know, to the Labour Party, 
because it does seem that they they don't have their act together. Do you see a, maybe a, a risk of that happening if they don't put their house in order? Well, it, it may not be that easy. There are provisions in Section 225A that, one, you must score certain percentage of votes in an election to remain a party, or you must win at least a word. You must produce at least a councillor to remain a party. So if you look at the fact that our Labour Party has about 34 or 43 members of us of reps, and uh, they have some maybe about uh, one or two senators. Um, yes, I know that uh, Senator for FCT and the Senator for Edo South are from Labour Party. They also have a governor in Alex Oti in Abia State. So on those grounds of having elected officials in the uh, national, state, or local government, they already have crossed that order. So they may not be deregistered on that. And I fear that INEC may not even be able to deregister the Labour Party in as much as, as um, it is not in breach of maybe uh, a, a situations where it uh, is a uh, process of registration is in doubt. So the issue of deregistration is really far from what may happen. But there is a turmoil in the house. And that's why Alex Oti, Peter Obi and a host of others decided to, uh, as stakeholders in the in the party, decided to uh, uh, have this 29-man committee to midwife a proper Congress and convention that would lead to credible leadership. Unfortunately, Abure and his uh, and his members of the National Working Committee are countering that and saying that no. Their tenure has not ended, and they came with their own formula. What I see happening, my dear sister and brother, is that is this will be this to end up in a protracted litigation, and that is already happening. There are several court cases that are already filed before different courts, and the damage that is doing to the Labour Party brand is that. People like Alex Oti may, may defect from Labour Party. And don't forget, Section 1 of the Section, um, the section of the Electoral Act, that, uh, the section of the Constitution that forbids people from defecting from one party to the other does not affect, uh, affect executive position. And they know what they suffered to produce that one government. So if the Labour Party does not put its house together, and this leadership crisis uh, uh, is unabated, the party stands the risk of losing most of its elected members. Yeah. Because the law is very clear. The only basis by which you can defect as an elected parliamentarian or elected member of the federal or state assembly, that you can defect from the party that brings you to power to another party is if there is a division in that party. And there is no doubt that there is division in Labour Party. In fact, in Enugu State, some members of the Labour Party who are members of the parliament have defected to PDP in, in Enugu State. And if care is not taken, the way they are pushing and shoving, Abure may end up presiding over an empty shell. Because when all the people who are elected on the party platform decides to leave for the either the ruling party at the center or the main opposition party, you end up starting to rebuild from the scratch. And that means even the revenue, the income that should have come to the party, uh, uh, that um, uh, the, the members who are elected on the platform of the party is contributing to the party post will cease. They will not get that funding. Because it's in all the um, all constitution right. of all political parties that certain percentage of um, rev income all of right, the elected members of the party should come to the party to run the party. So what, what may likely happen is that there may be mass defection of the elected members of the Labour Party across state and national uh, 
um, uh, uh, assemblies, as well as even the executive governor of, uh, of uh, Abia State. Abia State, they yes. May, they may find, they may find uh, solace in another party, and that would be very tragic for Labour Party. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, time will tell. You know, let's, let's fingers crossed, uh, you know, and we'll see what the next action of Julius Abure might be, of course, um, to challenge these decisions by um, INEC. And of course, oh, he's already in court. He's already in court. Yeah, and yeah, if you I'm, look I'm at aware. that, the, the, the INEC also has a senior advocate representing it in court where yeah. it has stated that Abure's tenor has ended and it doesn't have any locus to preside over the affairs of the party. So yeah. to prevent this protracted litigation, it's best to find a political solution to the problem. But if they dig deep and they go through the process of protracted litigation, they may end up presiding and over an empty shell because yeah, right. many of the members of the elected members uh, may, may defect out of the party. Yeah. Again, time will tell. You know, of course, you know all, all of these things. You know, are really in their hands to see if there there would be a, a formidable Labour Party in the next one year or a completely defeated Labour Party. But we'll see. Gideon, Joe, thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us on this uh, very interesting story. My pleasure. Have a great day.